Hello and welcome to this HOG4 tutorial which will introduce you to basic queue timing and the editing of queues. To demonstrate this I have already recorded three simple queues. To view the queue list window just double press the choose key. There are four columns that directly affect the way queues are played back and these are wait, fade, delay and path. The wait time is the time from one queue being triggered before the next is triggered. For example, if I made Q3 have a wait time of 5 seconds, when I press go on Q2, Q3 will automatically play back 5 seconds later. By default, any time entered directly into the wait column is a wait time, but by double clicking the box or touching it and pressing the set key, there are more options such as follow on time, which is the time from the end of the previous queue to the current queue being triggered. The fade time is the time taken for the parameters to change from the value in the previous queue to the value in the current queue. A single fade time can be given, or it can be split into fade in and fade out times by separating the values with the slash key. For example, if I change the fade time in Q3 to be 3 slash 5, then all parameters associated with the fixtures increasing in intensity will change over 3 seconds, and all parameters associated with fixtures decreasing in intensity will change over 5 seconds. The delay time is the time between the queue being triggered and the parameters starting to change to their new values. As with fade times, the delay time can also be split into in and out delay times. The path defines how the parameter will change during the queue. For example, a colour wheel could be told to snap to its new value at the start or end of a queue, or a position change could be damped and therefore accelerate and decelerate at the start and end of the queue to give a smoother movement. Making these timing changes in the queue list window affects all parameters of all fixtures recorded in each queue. It is however possible to give a separate fade time, delay time and path to every parameter and this can either be done in the programmer when the queue is first recorded or at a later stage in the queue editor. To open the editor for a specific queue in the chosen list, press Q followed by the number followed by the open key. To open the current queue, just double press the Q key. Using the next and back buttons allow you to view each queue in the list. This can also be done from the front panel of the consoles by holding down the Q key and pressing the next and back keys. You can also jump to any queue number here. To look at times, Press the Fade, Delay or Path buttons. In this spreadsheet window, times can be directly changed so long as this is the active editor. This is the case when the Edit button is selected and the editor name is displayed in the main toolbar. Changes can be made by double clicking in individual cells. Multiple cells can also be selected and edited at once. For example, in Q1, I can select all intensity fade times by clicking in the column header. Press the set key and make a change to all fixtures. Fade time, delay time and paths for all parameters recorded in the queue can be changed in this way. Timing changes can also be made directly from the keypad and kinds can be used to mask out other parameters. For example, pressing 31, time, 5, enter changes all parameters to 5 seconds for that fixture. Pressing 32, colour, time, 5, enter, changes only the colour parameters of that fixture. In the same way, pressing the time key twice will make a change to the delay time and pressing the time key three times allows changes to the path. For example, pressing 31 through 33, position, time, 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 6, enter, will give a damped path to the position of those fixtures as the damped option is the sixth option in the list. When you have finished making changes, either deselect the edit button or press the update key. By selecting the value button in the queue editor, parameter values can also be directly updated using the same methods as we have just covered for time. There is however a quicker way to update your current queue and that is using the auto update feature. This will allow you to either directly update your current queue with hard values or you can also tell the console to update the palette to which the queue is referencing. 
For example, in Q1, my three fixtures have a direct intensity value of 50%. If I change this in the programmer to 60% and press update, then the auto update window opens. By default, the console has selected the current Q2 update. I can either press the enter key or OK on the touchscreen to confirm. If I now update the position of that fixture, I can make the change and then press the update key again. This time I'm given another option. If I choose to update the queue, then the hard position values will replace the current reference to the drums palette. But if I select the option of the drums palette instead, then the queue itself will not be changed. Instead, the console will update the palette to which the queue references. As before, either press enter or touch OK to confirm. You may have noticed in the auto update window there was the option to track backwards. This will be explained in the next tutorial where we will take a look at the way the console uses tracking. Thank you for watching.